thank you. Can everyone hear me fine? Yeah? All right, cool. Introduce yourself? Yes. Sure. So my name is Ho Fai Wong. I studied in France, actually, in a system that's a bit different, kind of unique to France uh, or Europe, uh, classe préparatoire en une grande école. Um, yes, je parle français. But in any case, after that, I, I came to, uh, to the U.S. So in school, I had a background in uh, computer science, networking. Um, once I came to the U.S., I worked for PricewaterhouseCoopers as an IT consultant, so management and technology consulting across different areas of IT. And um, you know, through my, throughout my seven, eight years of consulting, I've been solving a lot of clients' problems, always with a, a fact-based approach. And so I figured, you know, might as well do it right and come to this boot camp to learn data science through and through from end to end. Um, you know, so I can uh, kind of reorient my career in, in that perspective. So uh, this project actually stems exactly from from my in quick introduction to you. Um, having studied in France and coming to the U.S. I was rather interested in seeing how uh, French schools, these, these grandes écoles, as we call them, are just not known at all in France, right? So I was kind of wondering, okay, well, what are the, the good schools in the world um, uh, from rankings that people, you know, I thought initially would agree upon? Uh, because these grandes écoles are supposed to be rather prestigious in France, and yet for some reason nobody outside of France knows about them, right? So uh, that was the impetus behind this project. I looked up um, and downloaded uh, ranking information from Kaggle. There was a Kaggle competition. Um, and they actually provided a couple of different data sets from three ranking organizations. So you see them up here. Uh, one commonly known as the Shanghai rankings, the uh, Times Higher Education uh, World University rankings, and the Center for World University rankings. So my initial question of, all right, what are the good schools? How do the French schools compare? Not that simple, right? From the get-go, it depends on who's ranking. Okay, so what I decided to do here on this first tab on this map is just to put some high-level stats of um, the, you know, the top rank, the medium rank, the number of universities by these different organizations. Right? So you, um, the user can come here, select which organization they want to look up the stats for, and then, um, I don't know if you noticed, but the stats actually change based on the organization. So another problem the organizations don't rank schools the same way. They don't have the same criteria, right? Um, and, and just looking quickly at, you know, Shanghai ranking, all right, US, Canada, Australia, European countries, you know, have highly ranked schools. Um, but I don't know if you noticed, Russia here, the top school is ranked 86 according to Shanghai, according to Times, 196. So some disparity between um, organizations and how they rank universities, right? So I went to, you know, dive a little deeper. And so I, and on the second tab here, uh, it's called or comparison. What I'm basically doing here on the scatter plot is showing the rank of each university, each dots of university. And you can actually select which organization you have on the y and x axes. So here I'm comparing uh, Shanghai against times rankings, right? Oops. The, the line here in orange that's the y equals x diagonal. So basically any point, any university on that line is ranked you know, more or less equally by the different organizations. So it's more or less consistent. On the flip side, the farther a university is from the line, the, more, uh, the bigger the discrepancy between how universities rank them from an overall global ranking perspective. So you know, on this map, um, you could zoom in, for example, here to see some of these outliers, right? that Shanghai is ranking poorly, but that Times is ranking highly. And case in point, École Polytechnique, one of the most prestigious grand écoles in France, ranked 61 by Times. OK, fair enough. Um, but ranked 350 according to the Shanghai rankings. Right, so maybe that you know, might need a little digging deeper into, especially if your um, you know, look, or you have someone in your um, immediate circles or acquaintances or family who's looking for universities and wants to know, you know, what are the good universities to go to? If they were just to rely on the Shanghai rankings, they wouldn't go to Ecole Polytechnique, right? Uh, and you can see here, there are a whole bunch of sliders. Uh, we'll get to that in a second, but basically you can actually filter, unfilter, um, find additional insights based on all the different criteria from each organization. Right now I'm sticking with the whole sample set, just to give you a sense of uh, how you could um, parse through this. 
And also here, you can actually select a specific country. So like I keep saying, you know, I studied in France, so let's pick France. Maybe I want to compare against the United States. All right, so the, you see the legend up there, the purple bluish dots, those are the US and the green dots are France. So very few, um, you know, in the top 100 in France, a lot more in the US. And um, the couple that I do see, you know, from France and straying away from the diagonal, those are actually Grand École, right, as opposed to universities. So that kind of lends um, to the theory that, all right, these schools might not be um, assessed the exact same way as others. So, all right, I, I mentioned École Polytechnique a couple times, right, being such a, um, um, an, an outlier in the sense that Shanghai is ranking it so differently from, from time. So maybe you could look at that school in particular, or maybe you know someone who's actually thinking about going to a specific school. All right, so you can go to the university profile. Um, right now it's selected uh, in New York University by default. Um, so I have here the, um, the rank, the scores from each of the three organizations. So Shanghai times CWUR along the different sub criteria. So, and, and for all these um, criteria, the definitions are in the reference tab. So let's look at Ecole Polytechnique. I hope nobody's from that school. Or actually, if you are, then this might be uh, enlightening. Um, so the Shanghai scores um, scored Ecole Polytechnique rather low, times somewhat better. Um, and if you look over there from CWR, um, eh, decently. Now, the thing with CWR is that the actual data had rankings, not scores. So for comparison purposes, I had to convert the rankings into scores. Just a caveat. So what I noticed was that for the Shanghai sub-criteria, a lot of these sub-criteria are actually related to research, uh, patents, articles, white papers, thought leadership, right? Which I guess Ecole Polytechnique isn't that strong in, right? They're, um, it's a grande école that's supposed to be, I mean, it dates back to Napoleon, it trained officers, uh, civil servants, um, you know, the, the next uh, C-level executives under the age of 30, and so on and so forth. Not so much research and, and um, publications and whatnot, which I guess Shanghai is, is valuing a lot more. If you look at Times, though, on the international aspect, they rank them pretty high, research rather low, but also income, right? So the amount of re, um, uh, income that they generate from working with the industry. So, you know, this kind of corroborates what I know from uh, my experience in France about Ecole Technique. But like I said, anybody interested in, you know, joining a university can look up their university and see what these rankings say about those schools. Um, now, with that said, the discrepancies that we've seen so far between ranking organizations tied to the sub-criteria, that's something to keep in mind. Right? Everything from here, which is pulled from the three ranking organizations, needs to be taken with a grain of salt. Right? That's my main takeaway from this. You might find all these BuzzFeed type articles saying, hey, top 100 schools to go to. Well, how did you select those schools? How did you score those schools? What are the criteria? And so on and so forth. Um, now, with that said, you know, this application can at least summarize and visualize um, how these three different organizations view the schools in question um, based on 20... 15 data, I should have mentioned in the beginning. Um, and the following tabs here, I won't spend too much time on, but if you're interested in a specific country, you can actually search for the country, get the data. If you're interested in a university and you know you want the actual data points, you can actually you know, search here, you can search multiples. Um, and like I said earlier, in the reference tab, you have all the, well, th these are some interesting points that I'll, I'll get to in a sec, but you also have all the definitions on all the ranking criteria. Um, so, okay, my couple of takeaways, like I said, Take it with a grain of salt, right? Don't base your, your selection of a university for, you know, not yourselves, but maybe your, your kids, nieces, uh, nephews. Um, you know, research more, how do these organizations select the schools? How do they determine the criteria? How do they rank against these criteria? Right? Don't just rely on the score itself, the ranking itself. Um, and also, so um, up here you can, I won't spend too much time on it, but you can kind of see that um, this represents the gaps in ranked universities across the three organizations. So the red means it's missing from their scope, right? So Shanghai, they're missing like half of the total of 1,000 universities. Times, they're, they're missing about 600 of the total universities. CWUR, they actually rank about 1,000 uh, of the universities. So the scope is different, 
And here, you can kind of see correlation plots um, for each of the ranking organizations um, to see the relationships uh, between the criteria. So for Shanghai, highly correlated. Like I mentioned, they're very much looking at research power. So all of these are related to research, citations, publications, and whatnot. Times is a little bit fair. Um, and CWR, they're a bit more recent, so they might need a bit more time to you know, develop credibility uh, on the academic stage. So that's my app. Thank you. So I, I have a question. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned that there's a I'm not familiar with um, Spotfire per se, but this is using a Shiny. This map is Google Viz. Yeah. This here is um, Plotly. Okay. And um, these are also Google Viz. So, uh, could you go to the, the chart again? Uh, the country or no? Just that one. This yeah. one's so Skyplot. You can zoom in. Right? You yeah, can... yeah, you can zoom in. Oh, you, the, you, have, you have the hover. There are a whole bunch of features here. You can pan, box select, lasso. And, and that's all free? Um, as a, in terms of a package that you can use for your app, yes. But like we talked about earlier, for hosting and whatnot, it's right. well, yeah. a different it's, question. Spotify is a very expensive, it's like a um, corporate, uh -huh. corporate use app. So quick view, Spotify's market is losing to R&M. Oh, yeah? Chinese. Interesting. I think the young market... Yeah, we're, 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 my company uses uh, Spotify uh, quite as a source for me, but this uh, artist... This uh, is great. You pay for a Spotify. Yeah, yeah. We, we pay a lot of money for Spotify. Right. This is very impressive. Any other questions? <laughs> sure, sure. Uh, NYU. So right now, you're selecting only one school at a time. But you can kind of see. So ranking, I'll stick on NYU for now. Shanghai ranked at 27, 38, 18. Boom. 8, 14, and 6. There you go. Another comment here is that these are overall global rankings, right? It doesn't take into account the domain. Um, you know, is it arts, humanities, technology, infrastructure, science, right? It doesn't take that into account. But once again, take it with a grain of salt, right? Well, it would be nice if you just have like the average of those categories being declared as well, so that we can just... Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep, yep. And um, I, I didn't mention this earlier, but like some of the uh, next steps that I had in mind for this where you know, that and you know, some other tweaks here and there, but mostly um, starting some actual statistical analysis on these different criteria. Like at the end when I showed you some of the correlation plots, that was me starting to look into that, right? To, to figure out, all right, for each of these organizations, you know, which criteria stands out the most? And like we saw for Shanghai, a lot of them overlap. A lot of them are, are probably you know, um, culinary you know, dependent. So uh, I, I want to see, I guess as a next step, right? What I would do to actually design a, um, a quote-unquote more robust ranking and grading system or framework. You know, not to say it's easy, not to say it's, it'll be adopted, but that might be an interesting exercise from a statistical perspective. So. Yes? I seen from the chat that the CW ranking yes. is lower. Is that related to the criteria you because it seems to have more person uh, criteria? Right, so, so as a user, can I just ask him that I can trust the view ranking more than the rest? A couple things to, to, to that. So firstly, CWR is relatively recent compared to the others, right? So already take that with a grain of salt. They're not as established, as respected within the academic industry. Um, secondly, they ranked 1,000 schools, right, as opposed to Shanghai and Times, which only ranked 500. So that's another aspect that you need to keep in mind. And lastly, as I mentioned, the sub-criteria, uh, which you can play around with here, they, um, the data had ranks for CWR, not scores. So the scores that you see for CWR, I mean, they're, they're calculated by myself for visualization purposes, right? So I, I had to mention the caveat. But, you know, at least you're able to more or less compare. D you know, don't quote me on those numbers, but you can kind of see, relatively speaking, did CWR rank a university high in research or lower in research from a relative perspective? And um, I, I didn't mention this, but you know, obviously you could play around with the sliders to see you know, how some of these criteria would affect schools. And I mean, for the United States, oddly enough, once I restrict the international score to the higher range, very few American schools are left. 
So according to Times, American schools don't have a very good international score. TBD, right? You've got to understand how they're defining and uh, scoring against these dimensions. So you can use that filters, you can get that. Sliders, yeah. Sliders. Every single one. And it filters uh, the data. Yeah, up top, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so, like you know, like the first tab, you can, if you want to compare different schools, well, this is Shanghai against Shanghai. I can compare CWR against Shanghai. And whatnot. So you make it so that when your database is like live from, from uh, it, it's pulling data from different like vendor, vendor portals. Um, you could, you could. I mean, for these data sets, I pull them from Kaggle, so they're just CSVs, right? But if you wanted to have integrations, sure, by all means. And afterwards, the front end is just you know filtering, slicing, dicing. Um, there, there's a lot you can do. Honestly, yeah. this is with what one week's worth of effort, a couple of nights and a weekend. My wife would say probably too much, but that's a different issue. <laughs>